All right, after a month, finally got internet back. Let's see what I've missed. Uh, Quake 2's been remastered. Cool. New Salmonella. I guess he's doing yearly uploads at this point. Huh. Two Civvy uploads. Yeah, Rise of the Triad. Expected that. And he's... SON OF A So sometime in May or June, I was perusing my Steam queue, like I do every morning, looking for any game that caught my eye. That day I did. Zorch. Zorch caught my eye for a couple of reasons. Firstly, had a demo. Always appreciated demos. As I've always found game trailers to be kind of pointless, because it's usually just a couple of cutscenes or dialogue put together. They don't really tell you much about the game, so being able to play your first couple of levels always helped figure out if you want to get the game. Secondly, the original engine was cool because they also tend to work better on crappy or older computers like mine, so they don't have to deal with making sure you dirty up an engine. And thirdly, Zorch is just fun to say. Zorch. Anyway, so after playing through most of the demo, I bought the game and decided to make this video about it. Thanks for your input, Kit. So the story is that in about a thousand years, humans still a spaceship capable of interstellar space travel, which to be honest doesn't sound too far off for what we're probably going to do, and with the ship they travelled to the world of Pugon, or Pujon, or whatever on, which was inhabited by, and I'm quoting the manual here, a small welcoming race famous for their gift of invention and resemblance to pugs walking on two legs. And in a show of Herculean restraint, the humans didn't enslave or kill them all. Anywho, you play as Orch Maximum, a professional slacker and owner of the most worst engineer of the year awards. Again, manual. One day she finds an ad for a vacation and decides to take some time off. This vacation, unsurprisingly, is a trap and the source of the growing number of missing people. Because people are disappearing again. Because need a plot. Zorch wakes up in a cell with all her belongings gone, which is where the game begins. Also, as a side comment, since the game's sort of short, I'm going to be talking about each level at least a little bit, so buckle up, there's going to be a lot of rambling. Episode 1 begins in your cell, and after some tutorials written on the wall, you get the wrench, which I find to be the most useless weapon in the game. Your primary attack is a swinging the wrench as a wrench. Your second attack is throwing it and it either comes back after a certain amount of time or after it hits something it comes back like a boomerang. I find it useless because you can kick, which, which you're going to be using to open all the crates because they all open one kick. But luckily in the next room you get the shotgun, which is a lot more useful. It has, again, two fire modes. The primary is a quick two-shot succession, where you fire both barrels one after each other, and the second fire is two barrels at once. I found the first one to be more useful because it can stun like the puddings. Oh yeah, crap, enemies. The pudding are the main enemy types you'll be facing during the game. The puddings are slime things that are clinging to a metal endoskeleton. They come in two main types, which are male and female. The male puddings are your standard trooper that you'll see in most boomer shooters, except they jump around a bit like on top of crates or on over your head during combat. But the female puddings jump over a lot more, forcing you to keep more vigilant and moving around. I I don't know why, but the footage I've seen of Unreal was similar to it as, and that was my thought while playing it, of them being, their AI is vaguely, I'm assuming, like a arena shooter player. I don't know, I've never played one because born after all of them shut down and I'll be damned before I play Overwatch. Anywho, they all carry the same weapons, which are a laser ball thing, 
a shotgun, chain gun, grenade launcher, or a missile launcher. The more powerful weapons show up later in the game. Introduced in the generator room, these flying metal balls shoot green lasers at you and are a bit annoying to deal with them flying around so you've got to change where you tend to be looking, but they tend to drop quickly enough with either the shotgun or SMG. Look, if you get hit by the hollow, it's your own fault. Just ignore them and you'll be fine. I don't know what they're supposed to be called, but they're a small bipedal robot with various weapons for heads, ranging from an SMG, flamethrower, rocket, and my new phobia, circular saw. I don't know what it is about them, but a robot jumping at your face with a spinning blade for a head terrifies me. I'm second thought that might be common sense. At the end of level 1, you see a bunch of velociraptors and chain gun puddings fighting each other, but you don't really fight velociraptors commonly for a while, but might as well bring them up now. Uh, two shots from the shotgun puts them down quickly enough. Anyway, you break out of your prison, destroying a nuclear reactor as you go, and presumably blow up the level to end it. I'm only guessing because there's rubble at the end of it, and the ending was reminiscent to how I've seen Duke Nukem 3D end. Level 2 starts in a basketball court, then leads you through a factory, fast food restaurant, and into an upside down version of the basketball court you started in. So, don't expect too much consistency between levels, alright? And before anyone asks, yes, the basketball court works, and you get a, get a reward from, I think it's an overcharge or something. However, I couldn't get the second court at the end to work, even though I spent time carrying a ball all the way through. Anyway, the new enemy types you face are the wasp, Ant things, bats, and the floater. Wasps are just wasps. Bats are bats, but a different type of bat later on can scream at you to damage you. The ant things shoot green shit at you and bite you. But the most important one that's introduced is the floater. It's a floating around headless guy that can revive non jibbed enemies, shoot homing rockets at you, and teleport around. Found that SMG fire where the, S where the uh, explosives spawn from is a good way to deal with them. Anyway, new weapons you get in this level are the SMG, primary is a shooting it, and secondary is a scope which is zoom in with W and S. Uh, second weapon you get is the grenade launcher. Primary is grenades, secondary is rockets. Found the rockets to be more useful because you can more accurately hit them before they can jump around, but slower bosses later on tend to work better for grenades. I uh, don't remember where you get them, but you get remote, not remote, um, sensor explosives and remote bombs. So basically you just think they're trigger bombs from blood. Level 3 takes you to a canyon with exploding bugs that act like landmines. Just run by them or throw one of the balls that the game gives you to throw at them. They seem to like to play with them, like kicking them around. Don't know why. Uh, the balls the game gives you are a beach ball, basketball, and a soccer slash football, depending on your political beliefs. Level 4 is a boss fight against the brain suckers. It starts off invisible, but a direct rocket blast tends to fix that rather quick. During the fight, it jumps at you and fires either homing or regular projectiles. Just circle strafe at it and shoot it until it dies. With episode 1 complete, I should probably talk about the power-ups that are in the game. Throughout the game, you'll find three types of power-ups, which are Invisible Paint, Overcharge, and Anger. The Invisible Paint makes you invisible for a bit. Overcharge maxes out your health and armor with your health and ticking back to its normal max of 200. But uh, Anger is... I'm just calling it that because it's a red angry face when you pick it up. It um gives you invulnerability and I think increased damage because... Things tend to die quicker when I had it. There are also three types of equipment items, which are your flashlight, scuba gear, and your night vision goggles. You start with a flashlight, and since it has unlimited battery, I never really used the night vision goggles, because if I wanted to see, I'd just hit F. Uh, the scuba, scuba gear, I also didn't really find much use for, because you don't really spend a lot of time underwater. And there's always two around the areas where there is water, so even if you do run out, you've also got a backup one, but 
there's probably a secret or something underwater that I missed, but the game gives you enough ammo and weapons to get by without needing to hunt for secrets very often. Episode 2 is where I found the pistol, the weapon that I probably should have used more. Its primary is a laser bull that can bounce and has a slight home to it. Secondary puts up a shield that allows uh, you to shoot through it, but enemies not to shoot you, which I always like when games give you shields that allow you to do that. Anyway, the levels. Level 1 is an open construction site without five or more missile puttings than you think there should be. So you're constantly being bombarded. Anyway, you meet a new enemy, a metal flying skull that explodes on you on impact. Don't worry, they have more health than you think they should, so they're one of the enemies I don't like. Maybe it's video game laws for enemies like that to suck. Highlights from this level is the flamethrower, which has a fairly useless primary attack despite its large range, but it's got a blood napalm cannon-like secondary, where it just fires a whole canister and lights a fairly big area. Anyway, level 2 is a pseudo-boss fight where you get the last weapon. It's a brain that fires electricity or an electric explosion thing. And with your new weapon, you fight these medium-sized walking tripod brains with who basically have the same weapon as you. Uh, except there's a smaller projectiles and they have mini tripod brain things that also help during the fight. Level 3 is a radioactive dump. Plays basically the same as level 1. Level 4 is a boss fight against the big walking brain tripod that has your weapon. And that concludes episode 2 as well as the scale of brain tripods. Since I couldn't find a good spot to talk about these two topics in the video naturally, I'm just going to talk about them now. Uh, thank you, Zeus. Is it... I'm trying to record. I know. But you have food. Mm-hmm. Yes. You've got cookies in your bowl. I'm trying to record, alright? Zorch has background humour throughout the game and the manual. Uh, during gameplay, it's mainly just when you're picking up a weapon, instead of it just saying, you've got more ammo, it's say, you add another shotgun to your collection, or yet another submachine gun, that sort of stuff. And in the manual, the game points out that it's odd that, like, soda, as the game calls it, and burgers are your main healing items. And like, where do all those calories go? That sort of background humour along with film sets and that sort of background palm trees randomly in levels. I find this uh, fits better into games because if you don't like it, you can just ignore it or just, you know, if you do find it funny, it's a background thing so it isn't constantly pointing out saying how funny the joke was and having characters constantly make same jokes over and over again. It's just text on screen that you can just ignore. I like you fill in the blank with AAA game. You can fill in the blanks of doing humour wrong. The amount of ammo pickups in the game I found to be perfect. Throughout the game I only ran out of ammo once and that was because I started using the weapon too much but the game seemingly expected it and the next room was just full of ammo pickups. The game doing this perfectly throughout the entire runtime as you can comfortably switch to whatever weapon you want to reliably get yourself through a room without the fear of wasting powerful ammo. Also, a lot of the and enemy, and enemies, I've been playing far too much rather than the triad, enemies that show up will drop the ammo that you use, so while you're attacking them you can pick them up and then use them against a different enemy which refills the first ammo, that sort of stuff, it just works well. Episode 3 begins in another industrial area, metal walls, tubes, corridors as far as the eye can see, but switches into swimming pool, water chamber, 
things that you have to change the water level to progress. But luckily the final non-boss enemy types are introduced to add some interestingness to the level, which are animals with missiles attached to them and more flying things. The missile animals come in like two main flavours, which are frog legs with missiles and slugs with missiles. The slugs can be big to small, different colours, but they all just mainly act the same or burst firing missiles at you. And the frog legs are just frog legs with missiles in between them to keep them together. Uh, the flying things are these weird kamikaze meatballs which double on death and flying eyes that shoot lasers and also double on death. These are annoying to fight for me and the doubling just makes them a pain so I just run by them to save time. Level 2 is flipping some switches to open doors but the game slows you down by throwing an imperial fuck ton of projectile firing enemies at you and floaters. Second area you get into has got a sort of mini boss with the biggest slug thing with more of the slugs around there so you just hide behind cover and hope you don't get shot too much. Level 3 is more grey, industrial, why do I keep saying imperial? Industrial grey, which is a criticism I do have, it is very samey and none of the levels really stick out in my mind except for the canyon one from level 1. Uh, this does get fixed later on a bit but I find it's a bit of an overuse of just industrial grey. Anyway, level 4 is new boss, the bounty hunter. Burst fires missiles at you but circle strafing still works so it isn't that big of a problem. Episode 4 has the most varied locations out of every episode. Level 1's your standard industrial sector, but by level 2 you have going to this weird abandoned temple that's a pseudo-stealth level. It, I say pseudo because it's filled with invisible copies of the boss from episode 1 and those medium brain tripods and weird green leaping people that are like the spore carriers from Fallout New Vegas, so it's not an easy fight. The game gives you the invisible paint power up multiple times throughout your path, so you're intended to go through it quietly. Level 3 is where the brain suckers trap ships and you need to fly from gusts of giant fans to different platforms to be able to get keys and get into the ship. And you can use the ship to shoot at some enemies and by the end of it you're flying up back to where you started to be able to open the door and leave, so giving you a lot of excitement. Uh, level 4, the boss sucked though. It's an army of creeps, which hopefully I've put up on screen, which just jump at you and shoot green crap at you, and they duplicate on death multiple times, which is worse than doubling, and they just seem to be too many of them, and of course there's a, they become a common enemy by episode 5, which is always great. Level 1 has you in a train tunnel with a train going on loops around the area, which you can ride on to get around quicker if you want to. The train goes around to areas with separate rooms that you go off into to get keys and progress forward into different areas. Uh, you make a Star Wars reference and find a secret room with a fish tank and a pool table. Uh, crash the train at the end of the level, so pretty good. Level 2 begins in a train station where you crash the train but is immediately back into the industrial slog. Level 3 is a bunch of different areas which a penultimate level should have and a bit more difficult. Start on a tram ride over some water and a bit of a industrial area but it picks up with a big open area near the end and battle on top of a skyscraper roof and you finish the level by destroying a film set which is always good. Final boss is the first difficult boss that I faced which is good. The other bosses were far too easy. Uh, the boss fire is large green lasers at you in, in sort of a area of effect-esque sort of way and also there's homing shots which are faster than you so you need to be able to maneuver around the pillars to get rid of them and to make sure you can't just stand behind a pillar and shoot at it constantly you can teleport around to force you to move. Once the boss is dead an ending powerpoint begins to play. After defeating the brain suckers later Zorch wanders around until she finds a head in a tank the head in the tank is the voice that's been in your head, and yes, there's been a voice in your head throughout the game. 
Uh, the head talks that talks about that it was the captain of these aliens which crashed on the planet and bringing it on ships so they can eat human brains. But since the events of the game took place in the span of one day, Zorch falls asleep during his monologue because she's knackered. What do you want me to say? It's good. Go play it. It's seven fifty Australian, so it's probably only like thirty cents American. Anyway, tallyo.